Antoinette Cooper at the Parenting Decolonized Conference said that if we look at the core of reconciliation, we're dealing with trauma. Um, and why did she say this? Because before we can deal with other aspects of reconciliation, we must first deal with trauma. And trauma happens, like, when does it happen? It happens kind of at the moment of the event. So if there's something that could be a trigger, or if there's something that directly happens to them, uh, there is an initial shock. There's an initial shock event. And, and during these times, it may be tempting to, be, to think about the future and what's the plan, uh, but the main focus, it quickly switches from that to fight or flight survival. Uh, so they're in a, a very different mode. Uh, and this means that when the adrenaline is running really high, we have a tendency to forget some of our basic needs like water and food. So the key is that we, we don't, we cannot really solve everything today. Uh, there will come a time where we will deal with more of these problems, but we're, we're in the situation of shock right now. Um, and so in this case, our, our children can help by just making an environment where it's easier to move from this fight or flight response to what is normal for them. And it's going to vary, right? Like what is normal for them is going to vary from what's normal for us. Now it can help to move the focus from the event to what they typically do at home. Uh, and, and that maybe is going outside for a walk. You know, like if, if going outdoors, that's how they deal with it, but then do that. Um, is it petting a dog or is it eating a meal with friends? These could be very normal things for them. Um, and it's not like you're going in and solving everything. You're, no, you're not. You're just trying to say, like, these are things that are, you're familiar with, that you're comfortable with. We're just trying to, to see how, that we can, how we can support that. Now, simply being present and letting the other person know that helps available when they're ready can be a way to just reassure them that they're, they're cared for and loved. And generally, they want to be, like, people want to be listened to. Uh, and I see this as, how do you indicate that you're listening to them? I think it has a lot to do with the types of questions that we ask. So are we asking questions like, how's it going? Good. Right? Like, sometimes when you hear that question, you start to think, oh, like, how are you doing? Like, and I'm not really looking for a response, right? I'm just looking for you to say good so I can move on to the next conversation. That itself is the problem. We're not saying that we're ready to listen. So what's another way that we could potentially show that we're ready to listen? One could be, uh, we just say, how are you holding up? Right? Like, it's, it's just a slightly different question. How are you holding up? It tells the other person that we know that they're going through a tough situation, not to say that we understand their situation, but we know it's not easy and that we are here to help them and we are here to listen. Um, it could be even things like if, if you're talking about... Um, I remember like us having some, some even just simple conversations like, you know, uh, like, are you taking some of this food back? You know, like the, these are normal conversations that people have. Those can be helpful as well because it, it gets them kind of in this, from this mode of like, oh, I'm running away to somebody brought some food and hey, we got to deal with like, what are we going to do? Are we going to bring it home? Those kind of regular conversations. Um, the other thing I would add is People have a tendency to, and, and this is just a, a general one because we're insecure about silence. We have a tendency to fill in the, the blanks. And, and this tendency is, 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 isn't going to help with the trauma space. Like it takes time to think of a response because you're so deep emotionally in, invested in, in what's going on right now. And so it's important to have opportunities to to speak to, to that issue specifically of how are we going to help individuals with this. And I think that I see this um, 
from the perspective of like trauma training is is not easy, but it starts with those conversations. And one thing that I have found very helpful uh, prior to like doing this in practice has been just role plays with friends. So you you would have other people that are in the same course and you would one on one role play with them. So one person um, is going to have a situation kind of given to them. And then the other person is going to be reading that out. They are going to be um, like playing out the scenario of what that feels like. And then at the end of this, of course, they can say their feedback about, well, when you said this, it made me feel this way. And it was like, ah, oh, so good. Like, I really liked that because that as a type of training tells you not just what the training is, it tells you where the ga gaps are for your own experience. Like, what are the parts that you are missing that you need to learn? And I think that that's a good way of, of starting with, okay, yeah, this is how we are going to like handle the, the like this is how we would discuss it, okay? Um, and I think that uh, really when it comes to uh, this experience, there's a lot um, that can be taught about learning about trauma, but this, this applies to all aspects of your life um, because trauma is a part of the human experience. And so if we can understand that well, I think that this can be useful for all of our children long term. Um, we, we can get like feels really awkward and we don't know what to say when somebody um, like I have an aunt uh, who had cancer. Like, what would you say to that individual? Well, if you had trauma training, you wouldn't hesitate in the same way. And I think that's the challenge is that we feel really uncomfortable of, of it. Of course it is because it's new. It's, it's something that we we don't get training on. And so some even base level of training, I feel is good for everyone. You don't need to be an expert. That's okay, right? Just know a little bit about it.